So today, Dr. Scholz, we're going to be talking about treatment for bone metastases. In a previous video, we kind of talked about how to find them and the diagnosis of with bone mets or the progression to bone mets. And so when it comes to treatments, um, you know, it's a huge topic, but where would you like to start? Yeah, we have a lot to cover. Uh, we have targeted treatments now with beam radiation. People forget that every systemic treatment, hormone therapy, chemotherapy, those all work for bone metastasis. And of course, now we have uh, monoclonal antibody treatments like lutetium and older radium treatments like Zofigo that go to the bones. But uh, before we do that, I want to share a case that a man that I cared for back in uh, 1996. And the reason I want to do that is the, uh, the, the whole sense of bone metastasis is, is that it's an inevitable downward spiraling situation. And that is uh, certainly not the case in a real case that I want to show with you right now. Let me grab my computer and uh, pull up a case that uh, uh, a gentleman that I saw back in, uh, for the first time in 1996. He was born in 1944. So in 1996, he was in his, I guess, in his 50s. And uh, his, when he came in, his PSA was 24. And he had a bone scan that showed uh, isolated metastatic bone lesion in his in his pelvis, the right posterior iliac crest. He had a usual, back then we did random biopsies, and six out of six cores showed Gleason 9. He uh, had a biopsy to confirm that the lesion on the bone was cancer. You can have bone scans that would show things that um, might be old trauma, but this was confirmed to be cancer metastatic in the pelvic bone. There was only one picked up on the bone scan. And one theme we've shared in the past is that in the old days, we were obviously concerned that if a bone scan showed one spot that there could be additional lesions that were flying under the radar. We didn't know. But he was treated in a fairly modern way. We didn't have Taxotere back in 1996. So he was given uh, Lupron and Casidex. Those were the two uh, available hormone therapies and a combination protocol uh, using Adriamycin Velban uh, so-called Logothetis protocol. So we got chemotherapy and radiation treatment was administered to his prostate, his pelvic lymph nodes, because we assumed there could be cancer there, and to the lesion in the bone. Uh, and to much higher doses than what would typically have been done in that era. We would give palliative doses for pain. He wasn't having pain but we tried to give curative doses. And lo and behold, this gentleman, as of 2023, is still with us. He has an undetectable PSA. He's opted to stay on hormone therapy, so he's always had a low testosterone since his diagnosis back in 1996. But we're now in 2023 dealing with a, a gentleman that had known bone metastasis and is in a complete remission with an undetectable PSA as of 2023. That's an incredible story. I think a lot of times that patients um, kind of fear like, well, is this just the one case? Or are there other cases in his practice where he's seen people with bone metastasis and they've gotten into, you know, we talked about remission and cure in the previous video. So how many patients would you say you've seen go into these remissions or cures? Yes, actually quite a few. The reason that I selected this gentleman is because he was relatively early on in my prostate cancer career and uh, didn't receive what we would consider modern treatment. He didn't have second generation therapy. He didn't have Xtandi or Zytiga, Nubeca. Uh, he didn't get Taxotere. He didn't get uh, high dose stereotactic beam radiation to the uh, lesion. All those things are available now. And most importantly, he didn't have a, a state of the art PSMA PET scan. Uh, we assumed that there were other lesions. There may or may not have been. Uh, but apparently, uh, either they're so small and hormone sensitive that he's remained in remission to the present time, or he, or he didn't have them. We don't know. It's uh, something that we're going to be seeing much more frequently. We have patients now with uh, uh, lesions, bone lesions, that don't even get radiation, who, after being treated for a year or two with uh, hormone therapy cons with a second-generation agent, uh, that are recovering testosterone and their cancers aren't coming back. One thing about prostate cancer, you do have to watch it for a long time to know what the ultimate outcome is. But some of these patients are more than five years out and, and have recovered testosterone and they're not recurring. So you mentioned the Logotheus protocol and you mentioned adriamycin. How does adriamycin, which is a 
older chemo, to my understanding, compared to, you know, Taxotere and Jeftana now? I would say it's not even 50% as active as Taxotere and Jeftana are. Uh, it had activity. We would use that for advanced disease. It's still popular for the treatment of uh, breast cancer. And uh, Valban, there was another hormonal chemo agent called MSET that was thrown into the mix. It had activity. It was the best available uh, that we had at, of, as of 1996. It was a useful uh, protocol, but it had a lot more uh, side effects, and it didn't have as much horsepower as Taxotere does. As you were talking about this case, I realized how many patients that I know that have had metastatic activity and have been Gleason 8, 9, and 10, and I still know them today and have known them for years. And so I think it's a really worthwhile thing to talk about because so many patients, when they get, once they get diagnosed, cancer is already scary. Metastatic cancer, that concept can be even scarier, but to know that there are so many treatments out there and to hear so many cases brings a lot of hope. I think one thing that this illust case illustrates is the power of combination uh, therapy earlier on, even although metastatic disease is not an early stage, it can progress to multiple spots, and then that's a more advanced stage of metastatic disease, whereas this is a gentleman that had only one metastatic lesion, but opted to use a combination approach and be very aggressive, and things have turned out well. There are studies that validate this, that giving uh, first, second generation hormone therapy radiating all sites of disease, and giving a short course of chemotherapy does give better outcomes. It's not something that's original with prostate cancer. This concept has been used in breast cancer and lung cancer, uh, where, uh, which are actually even more dire, dangerous, and deadly diseases, showing better outcomes with aggressive up upfront treatment. I've seen many patients who are very impressed by the decline in PSA that occurs after the initiation of hormone treatment, and their PSAs may drop to undetectable levels. Some of those patients might do really, really well long-term without any further therapy, but we know that some won't. And we can't really pick them out of the crowd. Taxotere chemotherapy at an earlier stage isn't that big uh, of commitment. You can have some temporary hair loss. You're gonna feel a little tired after each infusion. Maybe we'll only do four injections over 12 weeks. You're done. I'm glad to have this opportunity to just talk about the advantage of not having the cancer come back. Uh, it's true that we have other agents and we can keep fighting it, but the quality of life is just so much better when people stay in remission. And the uh, opportunity to remain in remission will be increased in these patients with bone metastasis who decide to do a short course of chemotherapy. Once you've done chemotherapy, Lou, let's say you know you have an oligometastatic case, there's less than five mets, the patient has hormone therapy and chemo. If the cancer comes back and they find more bone meds, can they get chemo later? They can, and they can do radiation later. This is uh, one of the amazing aspects of PSMA PET scans, and it's also an argument to not stay on the hormone therapy forever. Now that we have these powerful scans, if we stop the hormone therapy and the cancer somehow surfaces in one or two locations, then we can radiate them and er eradicate them. Sometimes, I believe, with confidence that there aren't any other lesions out there and that we're going to achieve long-term remissions. The methodology that we have is still evolving. We're, we're still learning how well these approaches are going to pan out over time. But we know we have a big head start on the disease now, especially with these new PSMA PET scans. And uh, being aggressive up front, and then once we've completed, say, 12 to 18 months of hormone treatment, taking a holiday, allowing the testosterone to come back and see if we got it all. And if we haven't, come back and do a second round of aggressive therapy, which is, I can't really stipulate a specific protocol because patient's age, how many spots, where are they located, all these things are gonna factor into a decision about how aggressive you would be on the second round. But uh, it's nice to know that there's flexibility and even I think, possibility of cure even on a second round. So one thing I want to point out here is we're talking about systemic treatments, and I think it's exciting. We have PSMA scans, there's the concept that you can shorten hormone therapy and that you can even get chemo again. Um, there's so much happening and so much new technology nowadays, but one of the things I want to ask is, you're a full-time medical oncologist who only treats prostate cancer. Is this a common um, protocol that patients can get across the country? Yes, actually, probably considered pretty mainstream. Uh, there are some oncologists that uh, are so busy treating breast, colon, and lung, and a number of other cancers that they may not be up with, with the literature that supports this approach. But the undergirding uh, philosophy, the idea of multi-agent multi aggressive early treatment for 
cancers in general is very much in the DNA of, of a general oncologist. Sometimes there is, um, again, an allure, the fact that the hormone treatment gets people in remission, it has less side effects. Sometimes we're dealing with a little more elderly population, and the oncologist may be a little reticent to talk about chemotherapy or think that that might be too much. But the studies really support that the treatments can be delivered safely and that they are very effective and they make a big difference. We've been talking about being really aggressive with treatment up front, right away, you know, early use of chemo. Are there any situations in which you would not want to do that? Well, we do know that we're, let's say someone only has one or two metastases and we're gonna be able to radiate those and eradicate them. We have to be sensitive to the fact that, you know, the average 85-year-old man has a median life expectancy of about five to seven years if he has no cancer at all. And these treatments can keep you in remission for 10, 12 years quite easily. So that argues then that piling on with layers and layers of treatment could be overkill. So someone who's uh, elderly, we have to do a sort of a balancing act. We want to allow for the fact that some 85-year-olds are going to live to be 95. They'll live 10 years. So if we add that unexpected good news that just because of their strength and their vitality that they're going to live a little longer. But still, uh, I've only had one patient, one male patient that lived to be 101, and, uh, and that is in 30 years of practice. So, so we have to be realistic. But apart from that, I think the uh, younger patients in general are going to be uh, benefited once we have established there really is a bone metastasis. It's a very serious development in prostate cancer that it's going to, in most cases, make sense to, to use every available effective therapy up front to try and get a, a durable, uh, complete remission and maybe even occasional cures. I think one thing that really stands out to me is the power that is in the patient's hands in order to make these decisions. I think oftentimes patients go to the doctor, they do whatever they say, but if a patient who's you know 85 and they want you know maybe a more extended treatment, it's really cool that they actually have the power to make that decision. And there's so many different variables when it comes to choosing prostate cancer, your age, the type of shape you're in, how you're gonna handle these types of treatments. And it's so good that patients can get the education they need decide which treatments they want with their medical you know, uh, team and be able to make educated decisions so they have better outcomes. And I thank you, Dr. Scholz, because that's a really powerful concept. Today we talked about bone metastases and systemic therapies, but there's a lot of other treatments besides this, so subscribe to our channel. And I don't say that just because I want a subscriber, I say that because I want to update you in other videos that we're coming out with, and that um, will do so. So we're going to be coming out with videos on targeted therapies and different types of treatments for bone metastases, and we want to make sure you're aware of those. A couple things I want you to remember. Make sure that you're taking care of your quality of life and your physical health while you are approaching or even in the middle of getting chemo or systemic therapy. Um, you know, some of the side effects of that is fatigue. And the better you handle it, the better the you're going to be able to feel good in your quality of life, but it also helps you with um, handling treatments further down the line. So make sure you're taking care of your body, you're taking care of your mental health. We want you to remember that you're not alone and that you can get the support you need, whether that's through PCRI or a support group or talking to some friends. Please make sure you even maybe get a workout buddy. Those are important things to pay attention to, especially going through these types of treatments. If you need more information, you can visit our website, pcri.org. Again, subscribe to our channel. We come out with new videos every week. And please remember, you're not alone.